Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this video, we we'll learn about SAP archiving. Okay, so I have divided this SAP archiving topic into two videos. Okay, so this is the first video, and we have one more that is the part two. Now, what is this SAP archiving? Archiving is nothing but purging the data in the database and copying it to a different storage location so that later at any point of time we can retrieve the data okay in the same way it can be restored as it was earlier okay so this is archiving the main difference between archiving and you know simply copying the data like purging the data and copying it on a storage devices when you archive the data later at any point of time it can be restored you can restore it you can view it in the same way as it was present earlier but you can't do any modifications however we can at least view the data in the same format it was present earlier now this entire archiving process consists of the following steps or process okay so first we need to specify the logical path and the logical file name using the transaction code file okay then next we need to specify the logical file name the client specific details by using the transaction code sf01 and the third one is then we start the actual archiving process using the transaction code sara okay so we have three steps the first one is you create a logical path and logical file name using the transaction code file. The next one is you specify the logical file name, okay, and the client specific details, okay, using the transaction code SF01, okay, and and the third part is the we do the actual archiving. We schedule archiving jobs or we do it in dialog mode okay so that is performed using the transaction code sara so sara is the main transaction code for the actual archiving process prior to that the configurations are done using the t codes file and sf01 now so what is this file transaction you execute the file transaction this is the initial screen now this activity is for client independent maintenance of logical file names and paths and includes the following the logical file path the descriptive name for a path in which data is to be held so we have a logical file path and a description for that okay so the logical file path okay uh, and sap contains its own standard logical paths necessary for standard options but we can also create our own okay so sap has the standard ones okay but we can create our own logical file paths okay so you click on the new entries button in the application toolbar specify the logical file path and its description in the name column and click on save icon to save the entries okay so you click on this new entries button you go to this logical file path definition node you click on new entries you give the logical file path and a name okay so this is the format logical file path and descriptive name okay and you save it so this is the first step in transaction file okay so you give a logical this is nothing but a logical name it doesn't exist at the worst level and you give a name also now assignment of physical parts to logical parts now we are done with this this part the logical file path is created okay like this logical file path and name and you save it so you will select the logical path you had created and click on assignment of physical paths to logical path option 
so once you create it here it can be displayed like this then you select the logical path you have created okay and you go to this option assignment of physical path to logical path this option so there it looks like this so this is the logical path you have created when you click on this node it will take you to a screenshot like this syntax group and name the conversion of the logical path to the physical path is dependent on operating systems for this reason generally several physical paths can be assigned to one logical path okay so this varies from operating system to operating system okay so logical path is nothing but a logical name so at the os level it should have an underlying physical path so the logical path is nothing but the name of the logical path to which the physical path is assigned name is the short description of the logical path here the syntax group and the name the syntax group is nothing but the name of the syntax group for which the physical path applies and the physical path is the platform specific path it may contain reserved words such as placeholders that are replaced by system values at runtime it must include the reserved word file name as a placeholder for the file name now since we already defined the logical path and the name we will define the syntax group and the physical path okay so so here in this screen okay you created the logical path you went to this assignment of physical path to logical path you want the screen in the screen we go to new entries okay then you specify the sin so it will take you to this so for this logical path the syntax group is nothing but the os platform whether it is windows nd or unix and the actual physical path okay because it is a unix it's a file system like sap mnt sap sid and you give the placeholder a variable like file name okay so after you have specified the syntax group and the physical path click on the enter icon click on save now the data will be same okay so are we clear till here first the logical path is created with the name then we go to this assignment of physical path to logical path okay the syntax group is nothing but the os whatever it is windows nd unix or whatever it is and then you give the physical path the actual path where the files are to be stored so it's like this sap mnd and sap sid so whatever file system and you give file name because you will store multiple files in this directory so you will give file name okay and you save it so we have the actual physical path and we have a logical name for that path also now click on the back icon to come back to the initial screen now the syntax group is displayed in the syntax group column so when you go back so here in the screenshot for this logical path you will see the syntax group and the name now select the syntax group and click on the logical file name definition client independent option this one cross client okay so you select the syntax group and you go to this one logical file name definition cross client okay so here we are now in this step we maintain the logical file names for all clients okay so here also we go to the new entries button and now you give the file name okay so file name also will have the logical file name and the physical file name so this is the logical file name and the description so the actual physical file how it should be created the data format the application area and the logical path which it belongs to okay so first the logical path is created physical path is created then next the file names like okay the files which are generated should have a naming convention right they are generated while archiving the files are created at the os level and then they are copied to the third party storage that is the archiving device 
so the files which are created at the OS level what names you are giving them so here we have given as rm and s time s time is nothing but the dynamic timestamp the timestamp at which the file is generated okay so here you give the logical file the name the physical path the data format the application area and the logical path So, the definition of a logical file name comprises the following values. You have a logical name, that is the descriptive name for the file to be stored. Then the name, it's the short uh, description explaining the use of the file. The physical file name, the physical file name assigned to the logical file name. Okay, so this is the logical name of the file and this is the actual physical name of the file may contain deserved words as placeholders that are replaced by system values at runtime. So that's what we have given here rmm s time. So this s time is the timestamp when the file is created. It's a dynamic value. Uh, in this case, uh, the physical file name can also include a path. In this case, the logical file name only applies to one platform and a logical path must be specified. Then the data format it's a three character key for example asc the data format is required when files are downloaded to the presentation server it can also be used as a file name extension so we have a data format here then the application area it's a two character key okay that identifies where the file is utilized but is of no functional significance so just for our uh, you know tracing we have the application area here then the logical path the name of the logical path where the file is to be stored so we have the logical path here the one which we have defined initially okay the logical path serves to determine the physical path for the file to be stored depending on the syntax field question if no logical path is specified the file get name function module at runtime returns only physical file name replacing any placeholder it may contain okay so having the file name is not enough you should have the location where the file has to be stored so that is determined by this logical path okay so we have the logical file name the physical file name description the data format the application area and the Path, the logical path now after entering all this information click on the save icon click on the back icon now the logical file name that you have created should be displayed in the test so enter all this information and save it okay so when you go back you have the logical uh, file name definition created okay so we have started with the logical file path definition we created a logical path and a name then this is how the logical file path and a name then we went to this assignment of physical path to logical path okay here we have created the syntax group and the name for the logical path Syntax group is nothing but the OS, Windows, and the or Unix, and the actual physical path, the path where the files are to be stored. Then we went for the logical file name definition, which is cross client. So here we have given the logical file name, the physical file name, a description, the data format, the application area, and the logical path where this file has to be stored okay so this is all about this transaction file it's it's the configuration for archiving now the next one is sf01 now you should use the transaction code sf01 to maintain the logical file names for the current client so make sure you are logged on to the right client okay 
so you have created a logical path okay and the physical path logical file name and the physical file name now you have to maintain all these file names for the present client so make sure you are logged on to the right client so you log into the client you want execute the transaction sf01 click on the new entries button the application toolbar okay so this is sf01 okay just select the logical file that you had created from the drop down box and the rest of the information will automatically appear so if you select the logical uh, file okay so you get all the information like this this KTT test if you have selected you will get all this information okay so uh, click on the save icon and click on the back icon to come to the initial screen so if you just click on this okay it will take you to the definition where you have created in file logical file name definition and you just save it okay this configuration is necessary because it is client specific so in this client okay whatever archiving i have done it will create the file name of this type and they will be stored in this particular logical path okay so this is about sf01 so in this training we have learned about file where we create a logical path in the logical file name then sf01 we specify the logical file name in the required client where we want to do archiving okay so these two are the configuration for archiving so when you talk about archiving these two configurations file in sf01 is to be done now uh, in the next video we learn about the actual archiving process okay so it's the sara transaction okay so there we learn like how archiving is done okay so uh, we'll see what what this sara decode is all about okay so uh, this video this uh, sap archiving part one it's about the configuration of file and sf01 which has to be done in archiving okay so i have presented the screenshots also okay so initially unless this configuration is done we cannot kick off with archiving because archiving is nothing but we purge the data from the database okay so files will be first created in the OS level and then they will be stored on the archiving device so the SAP uh, system it runs on a host so when you do archiving first the files will be stored on the host system the underlying operating system in terms of files okay so first you have to do the configuration of all those files you have to define this logical path map it to a physical path create a logical file name and map it to a physical file name so if this is not done okay then we can't start with archiving that's why prior when the first thing do this configuration okay and then do archiving so when you do archiving and the files will be stored in this format in this particular directory okay so that's why configuration is um, the first step in archiving and that is done through file and sf01 okay thank you